I want to talk to you a little bit. I'm not going to read a lot, but I want to talk to you out of the passage of Scripture found in Joshua chapter number 17. Let's bow our heads. Father, we thank you for the reading and the understanding of your word today. We ask you, Father, to make us patient so that we can carefully examine your word. Rebuke the devil and make the hearts of your people receptive to the truth. Do this in Jesus' name and we'll thank you. Everybody agree, say amen, amen. and amen. Now I want to talk to you out of Joshua 17 because it's something real important that you need to understand out of this passage. Here is the time of the dividing up of the land after they have gone into the place of promise. Now hear me first. You got to understand that when you are cooperating in the program of God, everything is not going to be easy. There are some of you that fall out in your faith and you lose your confidence because in the time of going through, you lose your ability to stick with what God has said because trouble and trials come your way. But you've got to learn how to believe God when God has said something to you. Even if God said it to you years ago, God is a God that cannot lie. His word even supersedes death. And if God said it, he will do it. And if he spoke it, he will bring it to pass. But you've got to learn in your humanness to hold on until the promise is brought to pass. And don't count God out when you start having trouble. You see, even though he gave them the land, they had to go in and fight for it. And so oftentimes you say, and it ain't true, you say, anything God got for you, you going to get it. That ain't true. What God, I ain't, you know, when you don't want to do nothing, you try to give these self, you know, proclaimed, you know, listen, you, anything God give you that's worth it, you got to stand up and fight for it. Yes, he promised them the land, but giants were in the land and they had to go in and they had to run the folk out. Let me tell you something. God may have given you that house, but you got to fight. He may have given you that husband, that wife, but when you see somebody else smiling and winking, you better stand up and fight. God gave you that ministry, but you better fight. He gave you an anointing, but you better fight. You can't just sit down and just believe that everything is just going to come my way on a flowery bed of ease. It might not be like slikes and a cup of cake, but you got to stand on what you know God has said to you. And so they go into the land. You know they go into the land. It's their inheritance. God has it for them. But you know enemies are in the land, and uh, they got to fight. And as they're dividing up the land, the passage of scripture that I want you to really look and get familiar with in chapter number 17 is when they begin to fight for the land and the land was divided up, here came the descendants of Joseph. The descendants of Joseph came and said to Joshua, who is an Old Testament typology of Christ, uh, we, uh, the land has been, you know what, I feel an anointing to preach in here. <laughs> he said the land has been divided up but we feel we didn't get enough. Uh -huh. There's some people sitting here now. You know, and God, I don't want you to believe for one minute that I'm ungrateful for what you've done. But somehow in my spirit, though I'm thankful for what I have received, I feel that there is just one more blessing. I believe that there is just a little bit more I'm possessing what you've given me I'm a good steward of what I've accomplished but God down in my soul I feel like I need some more the Bible says the descendants of Joseph came to Joshua and said you know uh, you have forgotten now who our father was we are the descendants of Joseph and based on our parentage, based on our heritage, and based on where we come from, uh, we are not satisfied with the portion of land which you have allotted us. Uh, because we are great people and we feel that we need more than what has been allotted. 
Uh, you know, sometimes in your spirit, you, you get a, a, a disquietness in your spirit. It's not a disquietness of ungratitude, of ingratitude, but it's a disquieting in your spirit because you say, God, uh, even though I'm in this place in you, I feel in my spirit that, God, you're calling me to something more and to something greater and to something better. Uh, the Bible says that uh, the children of Joseph went to Joshua and said, uh, you know, we need to possess a little bit more. Uh, you know, uh, sometimes uh, growth is um, sometime the greatest time of discontentment in your life. Uh, it is not because you do not believe God, but when you get to a place of growth, you must expand your territory. You remember that chick that's in the egg. Everything that that chick needs is in the egg. Everything that that chick needs for life, for survival, comfort is in the egg, warmth is there, nutrition, everything that it needs is there. But you know, when that chick begins to grow in that egg, it begins to kick against the thing that at one time kept it warm. It begins to kick against the thing that at one time nourished it and, and that brought it to the place where it was. But when I need to expand, I got to get out from where I am. Uh, I know this is a comfortable place. This is a place of comfort, but uh, my spirit is calling for more. And some of you here today in your spirit, man, you see where you are spiritually. God, I thank you for where you brought me from. I used to couldn't stop cussing. I couldn't stop doing the things that I was doing. I thank you that you brought me to a place of maturity. But now that I'm at this place, I see that you're calling me to more. I got to break out from where I am. The Bible says the children of Joseph understood who they were. Uh, we are the descendants of our forefather, Joseph. And based on his reputation, based on who he is, uh, we believe we deserve more. I don't know about you, but based on who my daddy is, I believe I can get a little bit more. Uh, you see an example of this also in Genesis chapter number 26. When Isaac was dwelling in Gerar, you remember when Isaac was in Gerar, number one, he was hated by Abimelech. Now you remember the hatred started with Abimelech and then it went on to his herdsmen. I want you to understand something, that Abimelech had no reason to despise Isaac. But the scripture says that he, in the 26th chapter, despised him. You know how people, you know, they will begin to hate you, you know, for no reason at all. You know, uh, they hate you. I I'm going to use some bad language. They, they, they bad English, that is. They hate you because you simply be who you are. You know, you ain't done nothing to them. You ain't said nothing out of the way. Uh, but, you know, just because you be who you be, they hate you for your beingness. Uh, because you be who God has called you to be. They hate you because you just be who you be. You know, look at her. I don't know nothing about her. Uh, I can't put my finger on nothing, but when I see her coming, there's just something about her. I just don't like her. Uh, you know, he ain't never done nothing to me, you know, but I just, you know, it's just something about him. It's just that, or, you know, he was dwelling in the land of Gerar, and God let him sow in the time of harvest and let him reap a hundredfold blessing. And the Bible says that Abimelech hated him, but he didn't give him any reason to hate him. He just hated him because he be. He just hated him because he was Isaac. Hated him because he was blessed. You know, don't you think because you young people in here, don't you think because, you know, you going up the king's highway that folks gonna love you just because you saved. Uh, don't you think there's people that despise you just because you be who you are. Uh, you got to remember, young people, let pastor talk to you. You got to remember who you tell your business to because they may be your friend today, but 10 years down the road, they may not be your friend. So you don't want to go into intimacies with people that you know ain't going to go the long haul.